Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Aquarium Online Academy. This is our moving and grooving episode, which is one of our favorites here in the studio, where we get to learn about animals, but in a really fun way, we're going to get our bodies up and moving and dancing like some of these animals. Now, I, my name is Sarah, and I am part of the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. And I'm not alone here in the studio. I have a lot of friends helping me out. We have Dana, who's behind. She's going to be changing all the screens you see here. She's waving at everyone. We also have Cynthia. She is taking your questions. Speaking of questions, we have a text line. We're going to bring up that number. And if you have questions about the animals that we're learning about, if you have suggestions of animals that you want to move and groove like, or if you even have video and you want to show us your favorite dance moves, you can send those into that text line. Now that number is right here. It's 562-286-1838. And you can send those texts in and we will do our best to answer your questions and to incorporate them into our program. Now, if you are one of our younger viewers, make sure you have adult permission and please be or keep in mind that text rates do apply. Now, if you're watching this program, after we've done, we're done airing, we're not live anymore, we have an email address you can email your questions to. And that's right below this phone number. It's live at lbaop.org. All right, are you all ready to get moving and grooving? So before we start moving and grooving, we're gonna start flexing our brains and our voices a little bit. And we're gonna see a montage, a group of a bunch of animals that we have here at the aquarium or that live along our coast in the Pacific Ocean. And if you see an animal that you recognize, I want you to either shout it out, or if you have an adult who's working from home, you can whisper it. But point out all the animals that you know. So we're gonna get that montage playing and see if you recognize any of these animals. Does anyone know what that is? Ooh, sharks, those are my fave. Got a fish. Ooh, sea urchin. So many animals. Are you shouting out the name of the animals you recognize? A uh, sea otter, they're pretty cute. Have a little snack. Got some fish. Ooh, sea lions. Oh, those are really active animals. Maybe we'll act out one of those in a little bit. A puffer fish, another good animal. Move and groove like. Our sea lions are showing us their best move. Oh, seal. An octopus. That's a giant Pacific octopus. jellies. Ooh, more sharks. Gotta include more sharks. Do you recognize that fish? It's a pretty popular fish. A whale! Those are pretty exciting animals to see. Oh, and some sea turtles. Ooh, scuba divers! Humans! Excellent! All right, did you recognize any of the animals that we saw in that little video? Well, we are gonna start moving and grooving, but before we start, let's make sure that our bodies are warmed up. So let's reach our arms out to the side really long and then reach up and maybe wiggle your body a little, get all your wiggles out and ready, get your body warm. All right, so we are gonna start moving and grooving like some animals that we have here at the aquarium. Now we're gonna bring up Blue Cavern, which is one of the exhibits that we have here at the aquarium. And this exhibit is one of our largest exhibits here. And it's modeled after a real dive site off the island of Catalina. Now this is Blue Cavern. Now I want you to take a moment and take a look at this exhibit and make some observations. What do you see in this exhibit? Let's take a look. We've got some fish that are slowly moving. But what I wanna take a look at is all these green things here. They don't move so much in this exhibit, but do you know what that is? That's kelp. We've got a kelp forest habitat here in our blue cavern. Now kelp is a really interesting thing. It's an algae, it's not a plant, and that's because it doesn't have a root system. So if you think of a plant and they dig their roots into the dirt and that's where they get all their nutrients from the soil, kelp doesn't have that root system. Instead, it has what we call a hold fast, which kind of looks like a big chunk of roots, but it's exposed. It's not into the ocean floor. Instead, it attaches to a rock. And then what the kelp does is it grows towards the surface, looking for the sunlight. And it's gonna use photosynthesis, similar to how plants do, to help it grow. Now, we're gonna start to grow like kelp. So we gotta take your feet and plant them really tight onto the ground. That's your hold fast. You're gonna hold on really tight, and then you're gonna grow Grow, 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 all the way up as high as you can. 
And then what happens is once the kelp reaches the surface of the ocean, it doesn't poke out of the ocean. Instead, it folds over. And all the blades and the fronds of the kelp fold over. And then it just drifts in the ocean with the current. So wherever the waves are moving it, it's going to move back and forth. But remember, your feet are stuck to the ground with that hold fast. So let's move like some kelp. And I bet we have, there we go. That's the video I was looking for next. Thanks, Dana. So this is a kelp forest out in the ocean. And watch how that kelp moves side to side. So let's take our blades and we're moving side to side in that kelp forest. It's actually really soothing. Just move side to side and watching the kelp go. Excellent. Are you guys moving like kelp? Hope everyone's up and moving and grooving with us. We've got some music. Ooh, my arms are getting tired already. All right. So we start off moving like kelp. Now we already have one question coming in, so we're gonna pause for that question and then we'll get back to moving our body. So Gage from Arizona. Hi Gage, thanks for joining us again today. He wants to know what do seahorses eat? Excellent, so maybe we'll take a look at some seahorses. Have Dana bring up a picture of a seahorse. We have some Pacific seahorses here at the aquarium. So here's our seahorse. Now, if you take a look at their mouth or their snout right here, it's really long and it's really tiny. So they are gonna be eating really tiny animals. We feed our seahorses brine shrimp, which are really little shrimp, or krill, which are other types of tiny shrimp. And these animals, they just float in the water. And then the seahorses, they are going to use that snout and they kind of suck their food up like a straw. So they, they feed like that. So maybe we can be a seahorse. They have really little thin fins so they can swim really slow. And then they're gonna slurp up their food. Move like a seahorse, eating your food. How did that taste? Did you guys have a good meal? Let's get some more. So they are moving and grooving, eating their shrimp as they're drifting through the water. They move pretty slow, but their food also moves pretty slow. So it's easier for them to catch it. All right, excellent. So that is our seahorse. That was a great question, Gage. Thanks for sending that in. All right, Dana is gonna give us another animal and we're gonna see what we're gonna move and groove like next. Ah, excellent. So we have a couple different animals here in this exhibit. This is a ex example of a tide pool habitat. So let's take a look, see what animals we notice in this exhibit. Oh, we've got a fish coming through. We also have this thing right here that looks like it's blowing almost in the wind, but it's actually in the current of the water. And that is a sea anemone. Now sea anemones are really cool animals that we find in the tide pool and they don't move their whole body so much, similar to how the kelp attaches to a rock our anemones, you can see right here, call it their foot. The anemone is attach, attached to the rock right there. And then they've got these tentacles. So you can bring your arms up like your tentacles and they're gonna wave in the water. Now, why do you think that anemone is gonna take all their tentacles and wave them back and forth in the water? What do you think they're trying to do? Let's take a look for a moment. Hmm. Well, if this animal isn't moving too much, it's not, running around the ocean, it's not swimming from place to place, it's stuck pretty much in one place for most of its life, it needs to find another way to catch its food. And that's where those tentacles come in. So grab your tentacles and what you're gonna do is you're gonna wave those tentacles through the water and you're waiting for maybe a shrimp or a fish to swim by. And anemones, they are relatives of sea jellies. Now think about what we know about sea jellies or jellyfish. How do they protect themselves? How do they catch their food? If you said they have stinging cells or they sting their food, you're right. And anemones, because they're relatives of jellyfish, they have stinging tentacles as well. And so they use those tentacles to sting their food. So we're gonna move like an anemone. We're gonna wave our tentacles in the air. It's pretty similar to how the kelp was moving, but these tentacles have stinging cells and you're gonna catch your food and then bring it into your mouth. Now the very middle of the anemone, whoop, here we go, right here in the middle, that is where their mouth is. So once they catch their food, they're gonna bring it into their mouth, pulls it into their body so they can digest it. So let's take our tentacles up. Let's move them in the water, back and forth. Get some nice hip action in there, back and forth. And then you're gonna sting your food and then grab it into your mouth and eat it all up. Let's do that again. Tentacles up, you're gonna wave them in the water, looking for that food, catch something, and then bring it into your mouth. Let's do it one more time. Got a third piece of food, that'll be dessert. We're waving our arms back and forth, our tentacles reaching for that food. You grab it, bring it into your mouth. Excellent. Now, that anemone is not the only animal in here. Now there's another animal in here. 
doesn't seem to be moving too much, but this animal is actually really fascinating. But one of what I think kind of the coolest animals in the ocean, but you wouldn't think it is. And it's these animals right here. They're all over. We've got some sea stars. Now these sea stars in here, we've got a couple different kinds. This orange and pink one with the white spots, those are called ochre stars. We've also got this one right here. That's kind of, looks like it's really lazy. That is a leather star. These animals, they also hold onto the rocks really tight and they use suction cups to hold on. So take out all your suction cups and you're gonna stick them all onto a hard surface. So now you're stuck, but they do move. So they use those suction cups to crawl along the rocks or here they cram along the glass and they move really slowly crawling along the glass. You can reach your arms out like a big star as you're gonna move side to side like a sea star. So this is how they move. Oh, here we go. You can see all of their sticky suction cup feet. And that is how they hold onto the glass. And it's how they move. But they also use those feet for a lot of different things. So let's move like a sea star a little bit more as we're exploring. Now, the other thing they're doing with those suction cups as they're moving around is something really silly. Are you ready for it? They're actually smelling with their feet. Now we use our nose to smell. We walk with our feet. But the sea stars, they are going to be walking and smelling as they move along on those suction cut feet. So you're actually smelling as you move around your exhibit or around your home, your tide pool. Now, what do you think they're smelling for? Cheeseburgers? No, probably not cheeseburgers. Mac and cheese? Oh, sorry, you know, I got confused. That is my favorite food, but I don't think that's what the sea stars are actually looking for. The sea stars are actually gonna be looking for things like mussels which are another animal that we'll find in a tide pool where they live. And they're actually gonna use those sticky suction cups to crawl around, to smell for their food, and to grab a hold of their food and help them eat it. And their mouth is also in the middle, Whoop, right here is where their mouth is. So they're gonna use those suction cups to do a lot of things besides moving around and moving and grooving. Now what's cool about sea stars is they can move those arms in all directions. We were just walking around the aquarium and we saw a sea star that had all its arms moved to one side. It kind of was slumped over, had all its arms all together. So it wasn't like a perfect star. So sea stars can move their arms in all different directions. You can move your arms all over like you're a sea star, trying out some different poses. Excellent. All right, we have another question or two. So before we move on to oop, our next animal, oop, got my microphone. Before I move on to our next animal, we're gonna take a look at these questions. All right, Lorelai wants to know, do kelp and seaweed come in different colors? That's a great question. Maybe we can take a look back at Blue Cavern or Amber Forest. So another kelp forest. Excellent, now take a look. So we've got some kelp right here and you can kind of see as it moves up, it's little different shades. And you're right, kelp does come in different colors. So it's a type of algae. We have brown algaes, we have green algaes, we even have some blue algae. So they're all sort of different colors. So that's an excellent question. Kelp or algaes do come in different colors. Excellent. And then Natalia wants to know, what do, ooh, what do anemones eat? That's an excellent question because we were moving and grooving like an anemone, but we need to know what they're eating. So anemones will pretty much eat whatever they can catch. So they don't move a lot. They can't go searching for food. So anything that's gonna swim through their tentacles, they might try and eat. Now, often they'll eat things like fish or shrimp, but I've even seen an anemone eating a sea star. So that sea star must have unfortunately fallen into that anemone. The anemone saw the opportunity and gobbled it right up. So their main things are fish and shrimp, but they will eat whatever comes their way. That's an excellent question. All right, let's see. Dana is gonna give us another animal that we can move and groove like. Remember, send us your videos of your best dance moves. We're talking here that we all have our favorite dance move. I think this is mine. Got to keep our bodies warm while we're waiting for the next animal. Let's the penguin grotto at the aquarium of the Pacific. In the meantime, oh, oh, this is a great one. What animal is this? Do you know? Well, let's see, there are some things on this animal's body that maybe help us understand what animal this is. Does it have just two arms or legs? No, nope, it looks like it's got a bunch of arms and legs and these things right here. What are those? Pinchers. So this is actually a spider crab. So we have spider crabs here at our aquarium. We have a lot of different kinds of crabs as well. And crabs are a really cool animal. They have 10 arms or 10 legs, I should say. And those pinchers are actually part of their legs. So if we were to count, we'd count all 10 legs. 
and that helps them walk. Now, most crabs, when we see them walking, do they walk forward and backwards? Not usually. We often see them scurrying from side to side. So let's get out your pinchers. Kevin, show me your best crab pinchers. And then we gotta scoot like a crab from side to side. Go back and forth, scooting like a crab. And then if we watch our Japanese spider crab here, they're moving their arms up and down. So we can even move our arms up and down using our pinchers, maybe trying to grab at some food as it's floating by us. And you can go faster and really slow. Oftentimes we'll see little crabs scurrying really fast. Maybe they're trying to hide, make sure that no other animal can see them so they can stay really safe. But our spider crabs, they tend to move a lot slower because they are a lot bigger. There we go. Very good. Excellent. Now, Japanese spider crabs, they live pretty deep in the ocean. You can see in this picture that it's pretty dark and that's because they like the deeper parts of the ocean. But we have crabs throughout the ocean. There are some crabs that live in the tide pool, so they live up at the surface. And there are crabs like our Jap- Oh, and here's another crab. This is another crab for their tide pool. And you can see his body is really different. Does it look like that spider crab's body? Take a minute. What do you think? Mm, looks pretty different. It's a lot flatter, wider, and a lot smaller. But look at those claws. Some claws can be really tiny on crabs. Some can be really big. And there's even some crabs that have one little claw and one bigger claw. They're called fiddler crabs. And they have one big claw and one little one. Now, what I think is really interesting about crabs is they can be left or right-handed, more or less. So they can have one dominant claw and then one that's not as dominant. And it depends on the crab if it's gonna be their left or their right. Now, I'm a lefty, so my left would be the dominant and then my right would be the less dominant one. And so I would use my left claw more as I'm trying to find things than my right-hand claw. Excellent. All right, we've got some more questions coming in. So before we move on to our next animal, let's take a look at these questions. So Jameson wants to know, how do, sea, ooh, how do sea stars walk? That is an excellent question. Maybe we'll bring up that picture of the sea star on the glass so we can see their sticky feet. Let's get that picture up. Now sea stars, they have those suction cup feet. Now they're, we call them suction cups, but they're actually called tube feet. Not two feet, but tube, T-U-B-E, tube feet. And that's all these little sort of polka dots. I think if you see them in person, they kind of look like macaroni noodles. So those suction cups, they are moved by water. So at the top of a sea star, you'll see a little hole or a little circle, and that draws water into the animal's body. And when they draw that water in, they are able to move those tube feet or those suction cups in any direction. They can make them longer or shorter. And that is how they move. They use that water vascular system. So basically, it's water pumping through their body the way blood pumps through our body. They have water moving through their body that's gonna help them move all those suction of feet in all directions. So they'll reach one out to grab a hold and then they'll move their body and then they'll pull that one back and reach another one and pull it back and reach another one as they walk all around. So excellent question, Jameson. All right, Mayim wants to know why does kelp grow? Oh, why does kelp grow so tall? That's an excellent question. Something really neat about kelp is it grows really tall and really fast. It's basically like a rainforest, but underwater. So it creates these really long blades or stalks of kelp and it grows about two feet a day if the conditions are right. Now imagine growing two feet a day in three or four days, that kelp is gonna be taller than all of us. So kelp grows really fast, it uses the sunlight. So if the water is nice and clear, if it's really sunny, if the water is healthy for that algae, it's gonna keep growing and it's gonna even keep growing once it hits the surface, it doesn't just stop. It's then gonna fold over and it creates what we call a canopy. So just like if you think about a rainforest, how there's a really tall trees and then their leaves spread out and it creates almost like a big giant umbrella over everything, our kelp does the same thing. It grows super tall and then it folds over and it creates a canopy. So it just keeps growing as long as conditions are right. Excellent question. Uh, and then there was a question of, is the kelp in the exhibit real? So if we go look at Blue Cavern, that's our exhibit here, all right, we're, it's gonna be a minute, but we're gonna bring that exhibit up. But if that, we take a look at Blue Cavern, it has that kelp and you'll notice, see how the kelp is moving in this image right here? So take a look to observe how this kelp is moving right now. And then we'll compare it to what the kelp looks like in Blue Cavern, or even Amber Forest. Here's Blue Cavern, excellent. Now take a look. 
Are they moving the same? Not really. So that's a great question. The kelp that we have here in Blue Cabin is actually artificial. So it's not real kelp. Now it's made to look just like real kelp. And our animals actually use it in similar ways. They'll hide in it. They swim in and out of that kelp, but it's not real. And there's a couple of reasons. One, we don't want our animals eating too much of that kelp. So we'd have to replace it over and over. And if it continued to grow, we wouldn't have any room for it in our exhibit. So we have artificial kelp here in this exhibit, but it looks just like that real kelp would, except as you might notice, it doesn't have the exact same movement, movement as it does in the open ocean, unless we would put a little bit of a current in there. Great questions. So keep those questions coming. And we're gonna bring up another animal. Our bodies have cooled down a little bit. So we wanna bring up another animal. We can move and groove. Like let's see what Dana is gonna have us do next. Ooh, she said she's got one. She's really excited about it. Makes me a little nervous, but I'm excited too. Got to keep our bodies moving, moving and grooving. Got my signature move. Ready? Here we go. What are we going to do next? <gasps> excellent. We were just talking about these. If you tuned in earlier today, Dana did an excellent program on these cute little animals right here are penguins. <laughs> this is perfect. Now, our penguins walking right into the camera. We got a good belly picture right there, belly shot. But we are gonna move like penguins. Now penguins, what type of animal are they? Let's see. They've got that long beak and they look kind of like flippers, but those things on the side are actually their wings because penguins are birds. Now, we, they do have feet and they do move pretty cool when they walk. So we're gonna start off with a waddle, like a penguin. So you're gonna take your wings, you can see, oh, too far. Both your wings, put them at your side, and then you're going to step from side to side and waddle like a penguin. Now, if we watch them move on land, they're not the best walkers. They don't, not really agile. They don't move really well. They kind of teeter from side to side. You can waddle like a penguin, waddling back and forth like a penguin. They move pretty slow, so we can move a little bit slower back and forth as they're waddling on their really short little legs. But let's take a look at penguins in the water. Do we have, oh, we're gonna get some music. Let's keep moving like a penguin. I moved on too fast. Oh, that's good music. As we waddle like a penguin back and forth with your wings out to the side. Now their wings are really interesting because do they use their wings to fly like other birds we see? Do you see their wings moving up and down all the way like this? Not really. Their wings are not really good for flying. Penguins actually can't fly, but they're really good for swimming. So they keep their wings at their sides as they're waddling back and forth, back and forth. And then when they need to hunt, so when they need to look for food, or when they are too hot on the land, they might dive into the water and then they're going to swim. And they'll use those wings to help them swim through the water. So let's see if we can bring up, what? We're going to bring up some diving, diving birds. So these aren't penguins exactly, but they swim in a similar way that penguins do. They are what we call diving birds. So just like those penguins, they use their wings in the water to help them swim through the water. So let's stretch out our wings while we're getting that video. It's all right. We're seeing if we can find that video, and if not, we can just keep waddling like a penguin. It's pretty fun to waddle like a penguin. You can waddle in circles, kind of dance. Penguins are in their tuxedo, so they're ready for a party anyways, so they are so fancy. All right, we're gonna take a look at some pictures while we're, or sorry, some questions while we are waiting for uh, any video or next animal. Uh, it's Alex's fifth birthday. Happy birthday, Alex. Thanks for moving and grooving with us on your birthday. Uh, Eliana and Maverick, what other fish eat, oh, what other fish eat sea stars? So let's think, what fish might eat sea stars? Hmm. Think about a sea star's body. Maybe, Dana, we can bring up while we're answering these questions some sea stars. Think about a sea star's body. Do their bodies, do you think they're really soft or really hard? You're fine. So sea stars, they live in the tide pools. They live in an area that gets hit by waves all the time. And their bodies right here, these are bat stars are really hard. There's not a lot of meat to them. So there's not a lot of animals that are gonna be looking to snack on sea stars. Now, like I mentioned, I have seen an anemone eating a sea star and maybe a seabird 
my E to C star if they can't find anything else. But a lot of sea stars are sort of the top of the food chain in their habitat. And that's because there's not a lot to their body. There's not a lot of meat or food there for other animals to eat. All right. Uh, and they have another question. Uh, if, if kelp is seaweed that we eat. So we do eat different types of algae, different types of seaweed. Now that giant kelp that we were looking at before is not the type that we eat, but a lot of these algaes and seaweeds are edible, like when we eat those seaweed snacks or we eat sushi. And we have another question. Hayden wants to know, ooh, do hammerhead sharks have any predators? Now, we haven't moved or groove like a shark yet. Uh, so we'll get to that because sharks are some of my favorite animals. But the question was, do hammerhead sharks have any predators? Now let's think, hammerheads range in size. We have some hammerheads here at the aquarium. They're called bonnet heads and they're about three or four feet long. They're the smallest of the hammerhead species. And for sharks, pretty much their predators are gonna be any larger shark that might be able to eat them. So there's not like a massive one predator that is looking to hunt hammerheads, but if another shark is hungry and there are hammerheads around, it will likely eat that animal. So larger sharks are likely to prey on smaller sharks if they get that opportunity. That was an excellent question. Thanks everyone for sending in your questions. Keep them coming. And we are gonna move on to moving and grooving like a new animal. I think Dana's giving me the signal that she is ready. Oh, we're gonna back to the penguins. Get your wings out. You're right. We're going back to penguins. We're gonna be swimming. So let's take a look at how they move. Oh, right up there into the camera. So they kind of flap their wings similar to how they, you would think they would up in the air if they were flying. So. Get your wings out, your wings out, and we're gonna flap our wings. We're gonna move a little bit faster and not so waddly like we did before because in the water, penguins are really good swimmers. So we're gonna kind of zoom through the water with our wings, using them to help us swim sort of like flippers that other animals that fish or sharks or whales would use. We've got our <laughs> wings helping us swim. Excellent job. I hope you're moving and grooving with me as I'm swimming around our studio. And we're gonna stop right here. Excellent. Great job, everyone. Now we have a couple more minutes, so we have a couple more, maybe one or two more animals that we'll be able to move like. Maybe we will end on some of my favorite animals Dana is gonna bring up. Oh, we have a question in the meantime. Uh, Mina, Kashi, I hope you said your name right. I apologize if I didn't. But you want to know, does kelp help animals? Absolutely. Kelp is part of a habitat, and so it creates the homes for animals. So there's lots of animals that will live in all the different layers of a kelp forest, from the holdfast at the very bottom, to what we call the midwater, which is sort of the middle part, and then all the way up to the canopy. Lots of animals will live in the canopy as well. And because the canopy folds over, it sort of creates a nice area, a nursery, for a bunch of animals to lay their, or fish to lay their eggs. And so we'll find tiny little fish living in that canopy. And then, aside from creating homes for the animals, the kelp forest is also food for a lot of animals. So there's a lot of animals who eat algae. That's their main source of energy, their main food. And so kelp not only provides homes, but it also provides food. All right, we've got another animal ready. Our last animal of this moving and grooving session. Ah, let's take a look at this animal. What do you see here? So these are my favorite animals. I absolutely love sharks. Now, watch them as they move. Sharks are really incredible animals. So they have a skeleton in their body, but it's really different from our skeleton. If you think of your skeleton, it's made up of bones. But sharks, if you watch how our shark moves, they move really fluidly through the water. They're really flexible and agile in the water. And that's because their skeleton is not made of bone like ours. It's made of cartilage. Now I want you to think for a moment, do we have any cartilage in our bodies? If you know where there's cartilage, point to it. You can point to your nose or you can point to your ears. Now, if you wiggle your ear back and forth, did it break? Probably not. And that's because cartilage is really flexible and that allows a shark's body, which is made of cartilage, to be really flexible when they swim. So we're gonna swim really slinkly like that shark. It goes back and forth like this, but we need our shark fin. So give me your shark fin. It's a dorsal fin, that fin on the top. And we're gonna move through the water like a shark. It's kind of like a snake might move. Their bodies move similar. And we're gonna move back and forth 
swimming through the water like our sharks. Now the sharks on here are gray reef sharks. They are some sharks we have here at the aquarium. They're beautiful animals. It's really peaceful to watch these animals swim because they're excellent swimmers. They can move really fast and that dorsal fin, that fin on the top, is an indicator of how fast that shark is gonna swim. So if you have a really tiny little dorsal fin, the shark's probably gonna be on the slower side. But if they have a really big dorsal fin, that means that shark is gonna be moving even faster. So you can decide what size dorsal fin you want. If you wanna be a slow shark who just kinda of swims slowly through the water, or if you're gonna be a shark with a really big dorsal fin who's gonna move really fast through the water, it is your choice to be whatever kind of shark you'd like. Excellent. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for joining us. We are about out of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Moving and Grooving. I know I got my body moving, almost out of breath here, and I hope you had so much fun moving and grooving with us. Now, if you do have any more questions, you can text us or email us at live at lbaop.org, and we'll make sure to respond to you. And we hope you tune in to our next session at 11 o'clock, where we're going to be learning about tide pools. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.